When I go hiking, I generally try and pack as light as I can. When I started the Appalachian Trail, I had a base weight of around 13 and a half pounds, um, but by the end of the trail, that had dropped down to about 10 and a half pounds. I started the trail around 18 pounds base weight and finished the trail at about seven pounds. So generally lightweight backpacking is defined as having a base weight of less than 20 pounds and ultralight backpacking is having a base weight of less than 10 pounds. And base weight includes everything that's on your back except for food and water. We like to keep our bags light because it's more comfortable first of all and it helps us get more miles and have a more enjoyable time while we're doing it. Becoming comfortable with lightweight backpacking often takes some practice and testing of your gear. And eventually you learn what you need out in the woods and what you actually don't. And you can kind of get rid of a few things here and there after each practice run until you're left with overall less stuff and then replace some of the stuff you have with lighter and lighter versions. I first decided I wanted my bag to be lighter years ago before I started Tiara Roa. And one of the first things I did was make a list of everything that was in my bag on a normal hiking trip. And it could be a little bit surprising how many things are in your bag. The next thing I did was weigh all of the things on my list. And that made me aware of some of the objects which I threw in for a weekend or a week long trip just because. The things I used to always pack from a gear list on my hiking club website because there was an overnight hiking list like this is what you should take and I just chucked it all in my bag. I never really thought about the fact that I took these things trip after trip after trip and never used them. Yeah, I think a lot of people do that. They get online, they see people's gear list and then they just kind of emulate that without knowing why. And then after I made my list and I'd weighed all those items, it you know became more apparent that there's all this crap that I'm carrying and how much it weighs and I never use it. And so I started yeah, removing items from my bag that way. And then after I'd removed all of the items, I looked at starting to replace items um, to make some of the heavy items lighter. My approach was very similar to that, where I started out with a book of what was most commonly used on the Appalachian Trail years and years ago. And so some of my stuff at the very beginning was actually outdated and, and too heavy, but it worked really well. And so I started off years ago with about a 30 pound base weight and started to whittle things out of that pack as I practiced more and more and found what I really needed and what I didn't. And once I got rid of a lot of that extra stuff, then I began replacing uh, like the heavy tent with a lighter tent and then everything else as well with lighter versions of that. And the same thing happened on the Appalachian Trail is I started out with more things than I actually needed, but I thought, oh, I might use this. and took little by little out until I just had overall less stuff. And that's really the key to getting a lighter pack. Well, I never carry a knife. I used to carry a knife and then I switched my knife to a one, a one ounce knife. And then I was like, I use this knife to cut salami once every three days. What's Not the either. point? I don't even like salami. <laughs> It's so, every three days. Like, I never, like, I used to carry it, and then you'd end up, like, with a stick of salami, and you just eat the salami off the stick. Yeah. Or, like, rip the salami apart, <laughs> because you didn't want to get salami all over your knife and right. have to clean your knife. And right. so I, yeah, I never used it, but right. I carried it. I also find knives pretty useless, but I did carry a very small Victor Knox multi-tool. And the thing that I most used out of that was the little set of tweezers. Or at least I thought, you know, if I ever get a tick, that's what I would need. But it also works for splinters and things like that. We both found that we needed fewer sets of clothes out on the trail than you might think. In the summertime when it's warm, uh, one set of clothing is enough, except maybe having a second pair of socks to uh, change into if you need to. Yeah, the key is being able to get dry at the end of the night. If you wear trail runners, for example, those will dry out overnight in the summertime. Uh, most of your clothing, as long as it's synthetic, will as well. And then really the backup pair of socks is just in case they don't, you want to make sure your feet are dry because otherwise you'll get blisters or other problems. Of course, not an issue I had because I or didn't wear, wear socks. socks or shoes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Although we both started the trail with a stove and cook set, we ended up sending those home later on. We found that we were able to lose weight by doing that and cold soaking our food instead. One of the common misconceptions with cold soaking is that you replace the stove and cooking ware with water weight that you have to carry all day. We were able to find a couple of options like couscous and ramen that were able to cold soak in about 30 minutes or less so that we could do that once we got back to camp. It meant that we didn't have to carry extra water weight for cold soaking during the day. Getting rid of the stove and cookware meant that when I was wearing my frameless pack, I didn't have any sharp or hard objects that would poke me in the back. And so this let me carry that lighter uh, and more comfortable pack as well. Because our core gear is so light, it means we have room for luxury items. And this means we don't have to sacrifice any of our comforts on trail by going lightweight. Uh, we both carried a pillow for the entire trail, um, an inflatable pillow. Mine had a nice little fuzzy outer on it. You can get some really nice inflatable pillows that don't weigh very much at all and yeah. don't break the bank. And for both of us, the quality of sleep oh, yeah. from having a pillow was really, really worth the wait. There are some other options that are lightweight as well, like using a buff filled with your clothing, for example, as a pillow or stuffing something else with your clothing to make a pillow. But it's kind of lumpy and not nearly as good. And as we just found it so versions. much more comfortable. Yeah. We also both used backup battery packs um, because we used our phones or other electronic devices for podcasts and music and things like that, as well as your camera gear. Yeah, I ended up carrying about a pound worth of electronics um, between the GoPro, the battery pack, um, my external hard drives and things like that. But it's really something I enjoy doing on the trail, so for me it's worth carrying that little, little bit of extra weight to do so. I also like to use a silk sleeping bag liner on trail. I find it much more comfortable to get into the silk at night instead of directly on my sleeping pad or under my quilt. And it means that all of the dirt on my body goes onto the sleeping bag liner instead of onto the quilt itself, meaning that I can wash it and uh, don't have to deal with so much stink in my sleeping bag. There were also several week stretches, week long stretches, where we just used the sleeping bag liner instead of actually getting in the sleeping bag because it was so hot in the tent. So that's always an option. Something else that we both do on trail that helps us keep our pack weight down is being aware of water. So especially along the AT, there's water supplies uh, fairly regularly and we can treat them using the water filter that we have in our bags. Mm -hmm. We only carried about one and a half liters of water capacity each. Um, and even those bottles often weren't full. And what we would do is fill up at one stream enough water to comfortably get us to the next water supply and no more. We found that on the AT, there were only a few times during the hottest months of the summer where we actually needed more water than that. And the filter bag itself uh, could carry anywhere between half a liter to a liter. And so we would just fill that up and carry a little bit extra water in those extra dry sections. Something else to take into consideration on trail is the weight of the food you're carrying. Um, the weight of food is outside of your base weight, but is the main variable weight that you'll be carrying. That means taking two things into consideration. The first is your resupply strategy, so how often you're going to be getting food. Um, we personally found that we would prefer to go into town more often and pick up food than carry for a five or seven day stretch um, between towns to try and avoid them. Sometimes this meant we took longer or weirder hitchhikes than other people were on trail, but it worked well for us. The other thing to consider is the weight of the food itself. Um, so trying to find foods that are calorie dense. Uh, we both aim for foods that have got more than 100 calories per ounce. And then having a good idea of how many calories you need on trail so that you're not walking into town carrying a day or two's worth of food. If you're interested in more information about the gear I was carrying on trail, you can check out my post-trail gear review video. I'll put a link in the description below. You can also check back on the channel in about a week, and I'll have a post-trail gear review video of my own.